Fallout 3, whenever you step outside of the vault and see sunlight for the first time, your primary concern is how you will defend yourself in the cruel and unforgiving wasteland. Obviously any weapon will do, but unique weapon models are what you should really use. If you don't know, nearly every weapon you pick up in the game has a unique counterpart with a different name, and is superior over the base model in some way. These unique weapons can be repaired with their common base model counterparts, and should never be sold. Trust me when I say that a unique weapon will easily be your best friend during your journey across the wastes. One of the primary problems at the very beginning of the game is obviously your low level. When you start, your lack of high level skills severely hinders you whenever attempting to acquire unique weapons, which are primarily protected by higher level challenges. However, there are four special model weapons that are on the easier side to grab. Two are classified as small guns and the other two are energy weapons, so you have your choice of which to grab based on your preference. Also, understand that it's best to grab just one of these guns, and rely on it heavily until you have a high enough level to grab a better unique firearm. Okay, now the first gun I'm going to talk about is Old Painless, which is a primary choice for beginners. The reason is that it's a beefed up model of the hunting rifle, which is a very common weapon throughout the entire game. To get this gun, you first have to go to the Republic of Dave, which is located in the northeast corner of the Wastes, that is, the very top right corner of the map. The rifle is located in a large building at the back of the compound, in a safe behind Dave's desk. There are several ways to gain access to the safe. You can pickpocket Dave for the key, kill him and loot the key off his body, or get the local residence, Bob or Rosie, to win an election that the Republic is currently having. If either of them wins, the victor will give you the key to Dave's safe. Also, on a total side note, if you look inside of the shack that functions as the school, you can find the Perception Bobblehead. The second small gun is the Reservist's Rifle, which is a very nice model of the Sniper Rifle. The Reservist's Rifle is more durable, uses less AP and VATS, and has a higher chance of scoring a critical hit. Without a question, even with a smaller magazine, the Reservist's Rifle is superior to the normal Sniper Rifle. To find this gun, you have to go to the Dickerson Tabernacle Chapel, which is in the northeast corner of the Wastes, and is located a good distance more west than north of Paradise Falls. The Reservist's Rifle is held by a person known as the Drifter, now it's important that before you engage this hostile character, you save your game. The reason is that the Drifter is standing on a platform that can't be reached, so if you kill him and the gun doesn't drop down to the floor, or a hunk of him doesn't fall to a reachable area, you won't be able to loot the weapon. Just so long as you save before you kill the Drifter, there's no need to worry. If you screw up, you can just restore to the save and try again. Moving on, we come to the special version of the laser pistol, called Protectron's Gaze. This handgun is essentially a tiny laser shotgun, as it fires a cluster of beams with every pull of the trigger. This is the reason why it does so much more damage than the normal laser pistol. To get your hands on this little toy, you first need to head to Canterbury Commons, which is on the northeast edge of the map, and north of the DC ruins. Once you arrive, you will witness a face-off between the Antagonizer and the Mechanist. After they clash and withdraw from the streets, talk to Uncle Roe, who more or less runs the small town, and offer to solve his superhuman problem. You only need to stop one of them, really. Nowadays, I think they only stay in Canterbury to fight each other. So what do you say? Now, there's more than one way to deal with this quest, but to get your hands on the special laser pistol, you have to work in favor of the Mechanist. After learning about the gist of the problem from Uncle Roe, head north to the recently marked Ant Agonizer's lair. Trapes through the tunnels, killing the resident ants as you go, until you find the chamber where the Ant Agonizer is located. You can either convince her to stop by passing a speech check, or you can simply kill her. Either way is fine. Regardless of your method, though, don't leave the lair until you have in your possession the Antagonizer's armor. I'll give you the suit. No one ever has to see the Antagonizer again. Just please, let me have another chance. With the ex-villain's cheesy costume in your possession, exit the hideout and head to the Robot Repair Center south of Canterbury Commons. Once inside, you'll have entered the Mechanist's base, and can take the main lift up to the big man himself, but only if you can pick the hard lock on the elevator door. Otherwise, you'll have to take the long route. If you head to the section called Sector A, on the top floor you can access another area called the Forge. Inside of this room, there's a coffee maker sitting on a counter. If you walk up and activate it, you'll be treated to the opening of one of the coolest hidden doors ever, and also open the passage to the Mechanist. When you talk to him, you first need to be sure you aren't wearing the Antagonizer's armor. Because if you are, the Mechanist will just try to kill you. Instead, with the armor in your inventory, speak with the delusional superhero and hand over the evil and tainted armor. In return, he will reward you with Protectron's Gaze. 
and for your loyal assistance. I'm honored to present you with this laser pistol, crafted from my last loyal robot assistant. May it guide you well. Now the last weapon is fairly easy to get, but requires you to run around in what may seem like circles. In addition to being a more simply acquired weapon, it's also by far one of the best guns in the game. There's actually a good chance that you'll use this rifle from start to finish, because it's so useful. I'm of course talking about the beefed up and improved version of the plasma rifle, called A321's plasma rifle. When attempting to acquire this weapon, it's important that you follow my directions exactly. If you don't, you'll likely end up in an awkward position, and have a more difficult time completing the quest. First you need to head to Rivet City. Once there, go down to the science lab and talk to Dr. Zimmer. Exchange words with him and accept the task he wants you to complete. This could be an opportunity of a lifetime for you. I've misplaced some very sensitive property, and you will help me find it. Then go to the Rivet City Clinic and talk to Dr. Preston about the job in order to get a holotape from him. There was a holotape that got circulated. I think I've got a copy of it. Yeah, here it is. Give it a listen. Next you want to go to St. Monica's Church and grab the tape out of the podium. Finally, head to the floor with the Weatherly Hotel and break into Sister's room in order to nab a tape off of the table inside. If you followed my steps properly, the tape on the table in Sister's room should be titled A Free Man, A New Man. If that wasn't the case, you'll have to go down to the market and try to pump Seagrave Homes for info, but this method is only successful if you pass a speech check. Next, head to the back of the market and exit using the back door to the broken end of the ship. From the outside platform, leap off and into the water. Under the surface to the right, there's a hidden door into the broken bow of the ship. Now it's easy to drown when doing this next part, so it's in your best interest to save just before continuing. After you dive down and enter the broken bow, swim straight forward and surface for air in the first room you enter. On the opposite wall just to the right, there's a door. If you dive down again, open it, and swim to the next room, there will be a stairwell in another room just off to the left. Quickly take those stairs all the way up, but be careful. There are mire lurks infesting the bow of the ship, so you have to stay on your toes. You also need to be careful because this area of the ship is covered with traps, so take extra care after you surface. Though it may take you a couple of tries to kill the mire lurks or evade them while not falling fatally victim to the traps, you will eventually get an opportunity to look for a man named Pinkerton. It's worth note that the door leading to the area he's in is locked, and can only be opened by hitting a switch on the wall opposite the door. Once you talk to Pinkerton, address the subject of the work you did. You want proof? I documented the whole thing. So I could rub it in the face of Dr. Lee when I need to rankle her feathers. I hate that snooty bitch. In turn, he'll give you the access code to his personal terminal, and all you have to do is access the computer and simply look at all the files to download them to your Pip-Boy. Once this is done, you can leave by following the main corridor all the way to the main door, and throw a lever next to it in order to unlock it. Once you do this, you can return to the bow of the boat very easily through this door. Now you want to return to Rivet City and talk to Harkness about the information you found. Convince him that the evidence you have is real and undeniable. After doing this, you can side with either Zimmer or Harkness about what to do, but siding with Harkness will net you the reward of A321's plasma assault rifle. Here's a little token of my gratitude. Best weapon a man could ask for. Just do me a favor and don't go blasting up my boat. Even though I only detailed four weapons in this guide, every last one is worth the time you'll spend finding them. Remember, having all four is overkill, and only looking for one is advisable. But if you're looking to kill time, by all means, go ahead and grab them all. <laughs>